Hello all, my name is Prish Nag and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this video we are going to discuss about activation functions. This video will be divided into part 1 and part 2. This is currently the part 1 where I will be discussing about two activation functions that is sigmoid activation function and reloid, uh, relu activation function. Now we need to understand this activation function because in my previous video when we are discussing about the neural network architecture we saw that each and every features will get multiplied to the weights and this was the formula that I actually shown you what happens inside a neural network, right? So, for summation of mind to n, wi multiplied by xi plus bi, right? So, bi, you know, it will be based on the number of neurons. So, this bias, I will explain you what exactly is this bias in the upcoming videos. But just see, this was a simple operation that was happening. The multiplication of weights along with the features were happening and then after that, activation function was applied. Now this activation function I told you that, uh, I gave an example of sigmoid, this will actually transform your y between 0 to 1. Now why this 0 to 1 is basically required, why activation function is required? Now just imagine that somebody has placed a hot object on top of my hand, right? So, suppose this hot object, right, this neurons gets activated because of that hot object and that sends a signal to my brain. Then I will be basically able to understand, okay, there is some hot object that is placed on my hand and then I can basically respond to that particular stimuli. So for that, you know, this activation function and weights are very, very important. They are various kind of activation function. Now when I say the example of other neurons, right, this neuron, nothing is happening over here. Okay, so no signal is basically transferred. And at that time, you can say that that particular neuron is deactivated. So activation function is very, very important. And there are some of the activation functions that we will be learning over here. So first activation function that I would like to mention is sigmoid activation function. This sigmoid activation function is basically used in logistic regressions also. The formula of sigmoid activation function is 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power of minus y. Okay, now what will be this particular y? y will be basically the value of the weights multiplied by the input features plus bias. Okay, and this particular y is basically transferred to this activation function. This is the activation function. This y will be replaced with the product of weights and the input feature plus bias. So once it is transformed, this will transform your value between 0 to 1. Okay, that is what a sigmoid activation function does. Let this product be any value, negative, positive or too long, too big values. At that time, whenever we replace in this particular formula, it will basically get transformed between 0 to 1. Now you need to note one more point. If it is less than 0.5, right? If it is less than 0.5, we are basically going to consider as 0. Okay, so 0.5 is basically the threshold. If it is greater than 0.5, we are going to consider the output as 1. Output of 1 basically indicates that the, your, neuron, your neuron is basically activated. When your output is 0, that basically indicates that your neuron is not activated. If the neuron is activated, that basically means that is actually transferring the signal and that is actually helping you to classify your final output. Now, this was all about sigmoid activation function. There are also some more activation function called as relu activation function. I'll show you how we can use sigmoid activation function and relu activation function in the future classes along with the practical application. But just understand the working of this, okay? Now, in relu activation function, what happens is that, suppose after this particular operation where I have found out the product of weights and the features plus the bias, after that, this particular function is passed to the relu activation. If it is passed to the relu activation function, a simple formula is basically getting applied. Now, this basically indicates max of y comma 0. Y is basically the output of weights multiplied by the input feature plus bias. Suppose if y is negative, that basically means my feature, my this particular formula gets applied for max negative comma 0. At that time, remember that the output will always be 0 for this because negative max of negative and 0 is basically 0. 0 is greater than negative number. Similarly, suppose if my output of y is basically positive, then max of positive comma 0 will be this positive number. That basically indicates that if my y value is negative, that gets transformed to 0. Simple. If my y is negative, that gets transformed to 0. If my y is positive, that gets transformed to that particular positive value. So if my y is 1, my output will be 1. If my y is 2, my output will be 2. If my y is 3, my output will be 3. If the y is 4, the output will be 4. Right? So all this kind of, this is the functionality of relu activation function. And this is much more popular than sigmoid. You'll see that when we'll be doing the practical exam examples for that and I'll also show you an example when to use sigmoid and when to use relu. 
So whenever you're solving a regression problem statement, most of the people try to use ReLU. Okay. Uh, let it be in the hidden layers or in the output layers. But if you are solving a classification problem, in the middle layers you can use ReLU. But on the final output layer you should always use Sigmoid. Because the classification problems can be two categories, three categories. You are classifying the output. And Sigmoid does that main work. It transforms the value between 0 to 1. That basically means this will be basically used for the classification problem statement. But still I will be showing you much more examples than that. So I hope you like this particular video regarding two activation function. One is sigmoid activation function and one is relu activation function. In my next video, I'm also going to discuss about threshold activation function and one more activation function which is called a leaky relu, which is a better version than that. Okay, so I'll see you all in the next video. Please do subscribe to the channel if you like this particular video. Please share with all your friends. Uh, I'll see you all in the next video. God bless you all. Never give up. Keep on learning.